Welcome to the first video module in a series of modules created to help you utilize the Viavi Solutions Cell Advisor series of base station analyzers. This video is applicable to any of the JD740B or JD780B cell advisor analyzers. This product matrix highlights some of the differences between all of the cell advisor models. These analyzers are operationally identical so this video applies equally to any of these models. The JD745B and the JD785B are the most full-featured versions of the Cell Advisor platform, while the JD746B and the JD786B analyzers are more focused on RF tasks, and the JD748B and the JD788B are more focused on signal analysis tasks. The JD740B series of analyzers operates up to 4 GHz, and the JD780B series of analyzers operates up to 8 GHz. This video was created using the JD785B. Please visit www.viavisolutions.com for additional information. Let's get started with our overview by taking a look at what we'll be covering. In the next portion of the video, will provide an overview of the physical ports on the instrument and explain their general functionality. We'll begin our physical overview by examining the RF ports. At the top right of the instrument is the RF input for the spectrum analyzer. This port is used to make over-air measurements such as spectrum analysis, band-specific RF power, and signal analysis. It can also be connected directly to various devices such as a base station or any other device outputting RF signal. It is important to keep in mind that you should never connect this port directly to a device that outputs more than the maximum allowed input for this port, which is 25 dBm, or approximately 300 milliwatts. Be sure to use an attenuator if you suspect the power might exceed 25 dBm. The far left RF port, labeled antenna analyzer output and return loss, is used to sweep cables. This is the port you will use to determine the visoire of an antenna system or locate a fault using a distance to fault measurement. This port is also used as the source for making two port insertion loss or insertion gain measurements and can be configured to output constant wavelength signal or CW signals as they're sometimes called. Certain models within the Cell Advisor product line may be configured without this port. Please refer to the product matrix for additional information on configurations. The middle RF port is the antenna analyzer input. It is used with the antenna analyzer output port and will terminate a device when performing a two-port test such as insertion gain or insertion loss. Insertion gain and loss measurements are used to characterize filters, amplifiers, or any measurement where you desire to determine the output of a device relative to an input. If you are testing amplifiers that require DC power, like a tower-mounted amplifier, the antenna analyzer input port can be configured to provide power as well. When testing devices with extremely high gain, like a bidirectional amplifier with gain exceeding 60 dB, you can use the RF spectrum analyzer port in place of the antenna analyzer input port. Using the antenna analyzer input port to terminate a device under test will allow you to make vector measurements which include amplitude and phase. If you are using the RF spectrum analyzer port to terminate a two-port measurement, you will only be able to measure amplitude. This is referred to as a scalar measurement. Two ports, labeled SFP1 and SFP2, are located at the front of the instrument. The SFP ports accept small form factor pluggable transceivers and are used to make optical measurements on CIPRI links. CIPRI, or Common Public Radio Interface Links, are most commonly used to connect a baseband unit, BBU, and a remote radio unit, RRU. With these ports, you can decode the radio frequency signals received or transmitted from the base station, perform signal analysis on the baseband unit transmit, 
and emulate a baseband unit to control and test a radio independently of a baseband unit. The network connection port located between the SFP ports is not used at this time. A GPS receiver port is located immediately to the right of the SFP ports. Connecting a GPS antenna to this port allows the instrument to determine location and stabilize the unit's internal oscillator. Once the antenna is connected, it may take a few minutes for the GPS receiver to locate satellite signals and lock on to those signals. Lock is achieved fastest when the antenna has a clear view of the sky. The unit will display a satellite dish icon at the top right of the display when the GPS antenna is connected. If this icon is yellow, the unit has not locked. The icon will turn green once the unit has achieved lock. All measurements performed on the unit will be saved with location information once the unit's GPS is locked. Certain measurements may even be placed directly on a map loaded into the device. The JD740 and JD780 series will also utilize the GPS signal to stabilize the internal oscillator, providing more accurate frequency and timing-based measurements. This increased accuracy will be maintained for approximately 72 hours after the unit loses GPS signal, so the unit may be taken indoors where no GPS signal is detected without sacrificing accuracy. Located to the right of the GPS port is the trigger port. The trigger port connects external signals that are used to start or trigger internal measurements. The reference port is used to obtain external timing signals. External references are sometimes used when GPS signals are unavailable or when a measurement requires extreme measurement accuracy. In most circumstances, the trigger port and the reference port are not required. The JD740 and 780 cell advisors also have industry standard USB and Ethernet ports. The USB port may be used for a variety of devices, including flash memory sticks, a Wi-Fi adapter, or the P5000i fiber inspection scope. The USB client port is used to directly connect the PC. However, the network port just to the right of the USB client port is generally used for this purpose. When connected to one of these ports, a PC can be used to remotely control the unit, collect a measurement, or transfer files. On the far left-hand side of the cell advisor, you will find a headphone port. Various measurements can be configured to emit sounds, for example, when limits are exceeded or measured levels rise. Using headphones allows the instrument to be used without distracting others around you. Finally, on the back left of the cell advisor is the DC power adapter port. This port can be used with the included AC adapter or an optional car charger. When the external power is connected, the front of the instrument will display an amber charging light next to the on-off button. If the unit is kept in storage for an extended period longer than 30 days, it is best to completely charge the battery and remove it prior to storage. The battery is removed by unscrewing the fastener on the battery door and sliding the door straight back. The battery can be pulled out by grasping the ribbon attached to the end of the battery. That concludes our overview of the various ports on the unit. Additional information is available in the JD740 and JD780 user's guides.